Hello, Rink Rats. Today we're with Thomas Robert Mella, the pride of Cranston, Rhode Island, presently the pride of Cohasset, Massachusetts, uh, BC Hall of Fame member, and uh, we'll go through the stats first, Tommy, if you don't mind. There's not many of them, I'm sure. <laughs> it's B BC's answer to Bobby Orr, number four at BC, 1969-1973, with a little lapse in 1972 for... U.S. Olympic reasons, uh, but Tommy was All-American at Boston College, All-New England twice, All-East three times, winner of the Walter Brown Award, ECAC Rookie of the Year, um, went to the Frozen Four in 73 with a 22-7, and seven, which that was a hell of a team. Did you come in third yeah. that year? We did. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a fun year. And Tommy had uh, 135 points at BC in 81 games for a 1.67 point per game average which is 12th overall in BC history, and he's a defenseman, mind you, although he played forward on the power well, play I would, in I would line up there, Joe. I would line up there. I and would then, be known to, to go. And then and you would get go. a slap from the snooker. But the perfect offensive defenseman protected his own zone and didn't let the puck out of the offensive zone once you got it in their zone. Would that be correct to say? Well, that's what With we rare do. exception? <laughs> You're being good to me, Joe Burke. With rare exception, but among, among defensemen, uh, Tommy is uh, second in points per game, just behind uh, the great Red Martin. I was going to say Red's got to be number one. 1.71 one in the year. Greatest of all time. 1.67, so we, you're in good company. But Red's up there happy that he still has the record, <laughs> I'm sure. Red, you're in good shape, kid. Um, led BC in assists in 71 and 73 with 30 and 45, respectively. And... Uh, had one sole BC hat trick versus RPI on February 6, 1970 at the Q Forum. Do you remember that? They must have sucked that year. That's all I say. Did they pull the goalie for three they goals? They must have. They must have. Um, but a great offensive demon. And uh, I want to talk first because uh, uh, BC recently raised your jersey to the yeah. Raptors, which was long overdue, along with your teammate and friend and. Uh, um, Compatriot, yeah. Elvis Presley, Tim <laughs> Sheedy. Uh, Timmy was Elvis uh, back then on campus for sure. But I want to start out by talking about your dad, who uh, I know is your, your hero in your life. He is. My dad is unbelievable. And uh, he um, is 98 years old. Uh, turned 98 February 22nd. Um, he grew up in Cranston, Rhode Island, where I grew up, raised a family, six kids. Um, he uh, was a good hockey player, played for the Boston Olympics yep. uh, back then, who were the uh, Bruins Farm Club, yep. and then got hurt, and they said, okay, you're either going to, he was working for the telephone company at the time, and they play weekends, and he'd say, okay, you either play hockey or, play, uh, you know, or climb, a pole. <laughs> or climb, a, climb pole. a pole, that's exactly what it was, and he uh, was, they were just about having kids, and so uh, he started climbing a pole, that was it for him. But he was my coach and uh, mentor, and um, you know we had a great group of kids in Cranston. And uh, so today, um, uh, he still is working. He drives a van for the Cranston Public Library in down in Rhode Island. Uh, they have six branches. He shows up. He works more than I do, Jeff. At 98? He's unbelievable. At 98 years old, still going strong. So yeah, he is an awesome guy. Um, you know, sent me, uh, allowed me to go to school up in Lake Placid, New York, where I went to high school. Yeah. And it was uh, tough for the family back then, but uh, I was uh, lucky enough to get uh, some uh, scholarship up there. And I played four years up there yeah. against, you know, I'm 14 years old, and I'm playing against Middlebury freshmen, St. Lawrence freshmen, uh, and teams coming down from Canada. We probably played 25 games a year. This is back in... 1964. Right. Yeah. So I'm sure uh, it helped my development as a player back then. It must have been playing against those guys. That's like or at 14 playing in the juniors. <laughs> that's well. To compare, I would say, yeah, right. Saying. He was with Oshawa Generals back then, but that's where similarity ends. So how did you go from uh, Northwood again right. to to BC? How did that happen? Uh, well, I think when I was a kid, I wanted to go out west. And, you know, I saw those great teams from North Dakota, Colorado College, all Denver. Right. Uh, but when I was um, living up in Lake Placid, uh, I, was, I had gotten away. And it was nice to get back home. Right. So, uh, you know, Snooks called me, and I came down for a visit. 
and it was electric in the stadium uh, in, in the old. Came down form. for a game. Came down for a game, and uh, you know Sheehy then was probably. Let me see. I'm a senior in high school. He's probably a sophomore. Uh, sophomore. Yeah. He's a sophomore, and uh, you know. Basterak and Barry McCarthy and Mike Flynn, Willie Putnam, uh, Paul Hurley. You yeah. know they had great teams back then. George McPhee was in the Nets. Yeah, George was cool. Bobby Toomey. Uh, yeah, they had a great tradition. In fact, uh, Bobby Toomey took me out uh, on the town. Snooks gave him, uh, I think, twenty bucks to get me we a, a nice steak dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, there were 24 empties at the end of the night, and my decision oh, was done. Cheap back then. Thank you, Bob Toomey. <laughs> Great recruiting. Maybe it was more than 20. Maybe it was 30. <laughs> Great recruiting tactic by the snooker. So, it was so a was, fun place, and I was so lucky to be there. And uh, so, so, so far in the discussion, we had two NCA violations. We just beginning. just beginning. And we're just beginning. There were no beanpots to take away from us, though. But you were so. uh, you were a winger in high school, and Snooker said, you going to the blue line? Yeah, you know what? I was a winger in high school. I played for your dad as a freshman. And here's the dog. Joe said, before this interview, do we have anything that might be? I'm going to take this right outside for two minutes. Joe, the you're on your own. Here we go. Come All on, right. kids. Outside. I'd break in a song, but and we still have something to do. And I'm back. And All right. Uh, Two and, beautiful uh, dogs. So, uh, if, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was a freshman, and then um, in my sophomore year, Snook said, Tommy, I think it's time for you to go back on defense. And I had played some defense in high school. I played forward a ship, defense a ship. So, you know, I knew a little bit about it. And I, I always saw Orr, who was my hero, right? I had no. Bobby Orr, Wastebasket. No. Who's, who's, uh, who's what's the your hero, right? <laughs> By the way, Franny Rocket, thank you so much. Uh, recently, as Joe said, when we had our uh, little uh, jerseys hung up there, yeah. uh, Franny Rocket reaches over and hands me my freshman jersey. And Joe is adorning it. It looks much better in it than I did. This might be leaving your house, to be honest with you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to run after this. Oh, my so. God. That's great. Um, but that was a tactic of, Snook, of uh, Snooks and Lenny. Um, they put the best... You know, the best player on defense. Well, um, you know, I realized after being a forward, when I got back on defense, I had the whole play in front of me. I really enjoyed the game much more. I could clear. try to pick a spot and go up yep. and, uh, you know, try to beat the first guy, get the puck up most of the time. Sometimes I try to ramp it up there. But love the game. became to love the, the game from back at the point. The whole game's in front of you. The whole game is in front of us. I got more ice time. You know, typically you're rolling out three lines, two sets of D, so I was, I was getting more ice time. Did you have the, two full sets of D, or did you have three guys? Uh, no, we had, uh, two. we had two full sets of D, and more and more you see, you know, there's a lot more lines, four lines, six defensemen. Right. I found that the more ice time I got, the better I felt into the game. Well, so Obviously, yeah. 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 No, so. That's all everyone wants is ice yeah. time. So. Um, now, speaking of Bobby, you're... Uh, you know, you were number four. How you got number four for three years in the heyday of Bob Yor? Did, did, you have, did you have to get there early to grab you that You know one what? Or? I think, uh, I forget if it was Barry McCarthy or someone on the varsity had, uh, you know, vacated it. And I'm coming up and I asked for it, not thinking I would get it. And, you know, once you get it, it's, you, you know, ask, you, you don't get it. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, he was, I mean, clearly my hero. Well, I, you know, I, you know I, as I look at photos of you, um, I'm looking at it, and you get the two strands of black tape, <laughs> you know, and I'm kind of... That was the, yeah, I look back, I say, I'm going, I'm going could this there? be more obvious here? He's got the two strands of black tape, he's wearing number four, he's playing defenseman, he's an offensive defenseman. I get caught defenseman. behind the net. Jeez, I wonder who his idol is. I know, yeah, yeah. he was, I mean, and then I was lucky enough after school to... Uh, skip school. To, Sometimes. Yeah, but yeah. to play against them. And I can remember uh, Boston came into Detroit. I was uh, with the Red Wings for about half a year. Yeah. And Boston comes in. Now, they're my favorite team, right? We had met them at the airport. For, so you were uh, calling the Cup, so and, Right. So I spent a lot of time on the bench that year. And, uh, you know, or scores early in the game. And, and I, I have to fight myself for, you know, 
getting up on the bench and going, yo, yeah, you know, <laughs> Espo feeds or and music is there. No. But getting out there was, uh, you know, just a dream that come true. true. It's it's dream come true. Yeah. Those guys. Were, were you on ever against them? Yeah. Yeah, I, I got my first NHL goal uh, against the, that night. Against the Bruins? Against the Bruins. Was he on the ice? Uh, let's say he was. No, will anyone ever know? Yeah. I beat him. No, I don't know, but I do remember Red Berenson laying a backhand in the slot, and I moved into it, and uh, just happened to get it right. Gilles Gilbert was the uh, goalie that night, and I think that cut the deficit to nine to three. <laughs> they were pretty good back then. I would have taken off my equipment and went home after that. Well, basically, that was my career. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was half my NHL total job. Oh, so, uh, but it was a thrill. You know, thrill to play against the Bruins. Incidentally, uh, today we'll do a call out. Do you know his birthday day is? Uh, I don't. We just talked about him. The big guy, number four. Bobby Orr, 71 years old today. This is going out to you. I got a funny story. <laughs> oh, okay. We are... Uh, I was fortunate enough to play on the Olympic team. And uh, my partner in crime would always tell this story, but Dickie McGlynn. The mayor. The mayor. Uh, and so uh, we are, uh, it's, the, uh, it's probably 1992 or something like that. We're in the Dockside Restaurant in Boston, and we're going to watch the uh, USA play for in the medal round. Okay. And now we contact, I think a Ruzioni came over. There were a bunch of guys from Boston. I played on the 72 team. Our coach flew out. We probably had 15 Olympians there watching the game at the dark side. And the radio stations got a hold of it, and Bobby Orr got a hold of it. So he comes run, walking in the room, and everybody is like, whoa. And so he gets involved in the conversation, and uh, he says, by the way, who wore number four on the Olympic team? Were you like raising And so I raised my hand and said, I did, Bobby. He says, oh, and I got to know him a little bit back yeah. then. He says, oh, is that right, Tommy? Well, guess what? If I had played that year, you wouldn't have been wearing number four. And like everybody's laughing, I said, Bobby, you're a Canadian. You wouldn't have made this team. <laughs> so, How'd that go over? There was a deaf silence. <laughs> He Bobby. said it, not me. What a guy he is on and off the ice. Oh, yeah. He was a true ambassador. So, yeah. so today, yeah. I just saw it as I was leaving to come over here. Yeah. Unbelievable. Seven, well, happy birthday, Bobby. 71 my to hero. the legend. My dad, my hero, you're number two. Yep. Yep. So. Um, now, I threw a couple of questions out to the panel. Who had a better wrist shot, Schilling or Ed Kenty? Oof. Uh, mutual friend of ours. Mutual, a great one. I'm going to say Ed Kenty. Really? Sorry, Shill. Right. Kenty, I, I played with Eddie uh, a couple of years at BC, a couple of years afterwards in the minors, and he, his shot exploded off the stick. I mean, Schilling could shoot, but uh, Eddie, and both of them were big and strong. <laughs> That's a hard one. But I think uh, Eddie was the best I've ever seen. He was the best. Um, the toughest... Uh Forwards, whether college or international, or whatever that, that you ever had to defend against. Okay, college Joe Cavanaugh, my hometown boy in Harvard. He was the ultimate grinder, yeah. and he would not, uh, you know, he would just not go away. And he had a nose for the net, and he was a great playmaker, and he was he was fantastic. I think Joe Cavanaugh. So number one out. is Cavanaugh. Number one is Cavanaugh. Internationally, um, you know, we, I was fortunate enough to play against some pretty amazing people that, on that Russian team. Yeah. And uh, they all flew. And back then it was uh, Karlamov. I was just, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Malsa. I knew you were going to say that. Uh, yeah, I mean, they were amazing. They were amazing. They just moved at a different level. So it, it, I found myself just, uh, you know, head on a swivel just watching them go by. So. What about the toughest goalie to get a puck by? Well, they were all tough for me, Joe. But I would say... Only, I know, the, and I don't, only the great ones are humble, I okay? Because they have something to be humble about. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think... Uh, I don't know if Dryden was in the league, but I, I'm not even going to talk about the NHL. I'm, I'm talking about... Uh, in college hockey... Uh, yeah, you would have played against... I, oh, you I don't think... I think Dryden. I missed Dryden by a year. That's a, that's a good one. Um, now... Uh, this was a thought I had when we, when we were on the ice when they, when they raised your jersey. 
and you mentioned the coaches, and you might be the only or one of a very few guys who was coached by my father on the freshman team, uh, the snooker, Lenny, and current coach Jerry York, who was yeah. the first assistant back then. I do. I, so, I mean, look at your senior class and try to figure out who else can say that. It's unbelievable. i got to take another break. My dog. Oh, the dogs. I'm going to give him a cookie, and then listen, right. there will be over oh, two golden retrievers. Yep. Normally, very well behaved. Get in here. Very well behaved. Get Beautiful in here. Dogs. Let me reward you for for being a pain in the ass. Here. Okay, here we go. Cookie here, cookie here, and we're back. I think we're going to be good, Joe. All right. I think we're going to be good. All right. Whatever. So I did. I played for. I loved your dad, and uh, he was. It was. Amazing it was guy. mutual. He was an amazing guy. Snooker was one of a kind, um, and um, I was so delighted to be able to play for Lenny his first year down. Well, that would have been his first year. Yeah, yeah, his first year down. So, um, uh, and then a Jerry York story. So Jerry, when I was a freshman, he was a senior graduate assistant right. skating around out there with Red Martin, Billy Daly. Yep. I mean, uh, uh, unbelievable. So freshman year, I ran into some academic problems the <laughs> first part of the year. And Jerry pulls me aside, gives me a color-coded uh, grid, and uh, says, follow this grid, and you'll be fine. And I followed the grid, and I'll tell you what, I enjoyed classes, and, but that was a major turnaround. Uh, Jerry really taking the time to say, hey, you know what, you're here to, to, <laughs> to go to school. Hockey is nice. But you're here to get an education and go to school. He, and he continues to have that message. Um, all right, now I want to talk about this book, which I read last week, and I'm actually glad we postponed meeting because it gave me a chance to finish this. Go out and buy this book. This is unbelievable. I can't pronounce the author's name because it's, Ita Ca it's Italian. Caracoli. Caracoli. There's a lot of vowels in there, and I was having some problems. From but... County Corks. Is that right? <laughs> no. <laughs> the, the eastern side? Uh, striking Silva. By uh, the Caracoli brothers, right? Correct, yeah, twins, go Tom out, and Jerry. If you like hockey, go out and get this t today. It's on Amazon. Good show. So I'm selling it, all right? Send this along to them. They're going to love that. Striking Silver. It's all about, it's, and it's an interesting book on a lot of levels because it's, it's, you can look at, it's a history book. It's a book about guys from all over the country at a complete time of turmoil in the United States. The yeah. Vietnam War, the, the, half the team could have gone to Vietnam. Yeah. The, Getting drafted. Timmy Shee's in the Army. I've known Timmy all my life. I never knew he was in the Army until yeah. I read this. Yeah. Um, Stu Irving is in Vietnam. Unbelievable story, Stu Irving. All, and yeah. all these guys come together, but it's a, team, it's a book about being a team, about being a team, teamwork, um, uh, coaching. It's a book about coaching, big time with Murray Williams. Yeah, he was uh, he was great. You know, he was a, a huge factor in our success for sure, for sure. I mean, and I learned a lot how you know just how they they can work the team to mold. You know yeah. what I mean? And obviously it worked. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, we were in the right place at the right time, mm -hmm. and we we peaked at the right time. It was a, a wonderful uh, year for me, for sure. Um, and uh, you know, it was at a time also where. American players really didn't have, with very, very rare exception, a shot in the NHL. So, I mean, w w one thing that struck me, I'm like, if these guys don't make the team, they're going back to Vietnam. <laughs> well, they're going to Vietnam or going back to Vietnam. Talk about incentive to make a team. I, I think uh, if you're of that age, you remember the lottery oh, God. Uh, under Nixon's regime where, uh, you know, you had a birthday and they had this big bowl and they'd pull these capsules out and read off their day and... If you were under a hundred, uh, you were you were going unless you were married or had some other uh, excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I luckily was, uh, you know, a very high number in that lottery, so was safe. But Timmy was not. Timmy was four was, nine. Yeah, and he uh, he served some time, and then he served some time. You know, the Olympic team was really. Part of his uh, duty to the country, so yeah. that was uh, fortunate for him. Yeah. And as you said, Stewie Irving was in Vietnam yeah. and uh, had been a great player. Uh, and he wasn't at the really back end of Vietnam either. He no, was, he was he was in there. He yeah, was he in was the crowd. Muck, he was mucking around. 
the swamps and uh, got the uh, got the note from his uh, commander in chief or whatever and uh, mm -hmm. said you have a tryout in Bloomington, Minnesota. Yeah. And he he thought it was a joke. Yeah. And uh, and it, it turned out it wasn't. And I was there when we picked him up for the airport. And Stewie, nobody worked harder in training camp than Stewie. I would and, think uh, not. He had two. He had two full groins, blisters all over the place. He hadn't skated, but boy, he never gave up, and he was a key cog on our team success in '72. It was. It was interesting. You know, they they uh, they they called you guys the forgotten miracle. You know, nobody saw it on TV. Right. If they did see a game, it was at three in the morning back here. And nobody publicized it. It was in Japan. There was a lot of other stuff going on TV. Obviously, hockey wasn't probably a news priority right. th those days. But I was thinking, you know, the three, if you go 1960, you guys in 72, and the 80 team, there was huge international crises at all three of those times. You, you had the Cold War. You still have the yeah, Cold War with yeah, you guys. Yeah, Vietnam. Right. 80, you had the hostage crisis. Yeah. And still the Cold War yeah, going on. Right. You know? And you got, it, the only difference was that one was at home. Yeah. But that was still on tape. Well, it was still, a, yeah, a lot of national pride. You know? Yeah. That I was know. still on tape. I know. I remember getting a call from Regan that Sunday morning. They won it. I said, what? what? Don't even say that. It was, there was a tape delay. How about that? And these were the tape delay. So you guys on alone like with not that. being broadcast. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but we really didn't care. We were over there uh, having, you know, enjoying the, the highlight of our life over there. I would think so. Yeah. Um, talk about... I thought this was really funny. You guys are over there. You get the, you said the food's tremendous, right? Yeah. And you guys are eating steaks, probably having Coca Colas and fraps or whatever. Yeah, the dining situation was amazing. They had four huge dining rooms where all the athletes could go in the village, and they had the Asian sector, the basically the American and some other cultures, and you know we were basically hanging out having steaks, and it was like load up. I can remember the coolers of Fanta soda. Oh, God. Uh, and every rink we went to, just orange, orange and grape soda. Orange Fanta. Fanta's after practice. It was like, that's good training, by the way. Orange Fanta. Yeah. And then you, then you look over at the Russians, and what are they eating? Yogurt? Yeah, right. Nuts. Water. They have a, then they're going out to play soccer. You guys must have thought they were nuts. Yeah, they were nuts. <laughs> but you ended up hanging out. After, they wanted you guys to be the Czechs so yes, bad. they did. Because that's their natural enemy. Yeah, it was interesting back then, Joe. They, uh, you know, they didn't have these medal rounds. They basically, you get into the A pool or the B pool, and you have to, you have to win the first game to determine which way you're going. Yeah. If you lose the first game, you have no shot at the medal. If you win the first game, you're one of eight teams to go in the medal round, and everybody plays each other once. And so we beat the Czechs, and but we lost to the Swedes and the Russians. And we beat everybody else. Poland and Finland, yeah. was it? And then uh, Finland beat Sweden, and Czechoslovakia beat Sweden. But so there were there were a number of uh, records that were the same. Yeah. And so as a result, when the dust settled, uh, when the Russians beat the Czechs in that final game on that Sunday afternoon, you guys we became silver medalists. Yeah, yeah. That was a pretty exciting time. Uh, and tell me about the celebration. Vodka and caviar? Uh, yeah. Well, here's a funny story. So we go into a nightclub in Sapporo, which is a million people. You know, you never hear of Sapporo. Sapporo is on the northern island of Hokkaido. And uh, so we go into a nightclub. And I, I'll tell I you, this team had been... Don't ask me how to spell that. Okay? <laughs> so anyway. Um, and this, uh, you know, this team had been, we had been, like, uh, really paying attention to the rules. Nobody, you know, we were in early, uh, huddled around. So... We had a lot of unleashing to do, and we went in that night. And I can still remember up top, and the, you know the drinks are flowing, and the music's playing, and Murray Williamson, our coach, is just we're all sitting together, uh, you know, raising our glasses uh, and celebrating the moment. And so Dick McGlynn goes over to JoJo Starbuck, who's uh, a who, babe, who's a babe, babelicious, babelicious man. And she later married, I think, Terry Bradshaw. That's right. But uh, she was a figure skater along with Janet Lynn that year. Another babe. But another babe. But a young babe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Too young. Too young. <laughs> so, um, so McGlynn goes over to Jojo Starbuck and says, Jojo, you want to really help us out? Go ask our coach to dance, Murray Williamson. So she's 
all in, right? So she, we're all sitting around, <laughs> and here comes JoJo Starbuck, comes up to the table and says, Hi, Murray. Would you, would you like to dance? And Murray <laughs> puffs his chest out, right? Because. And walks away, was strutting away, and is dancing with JoJo, and we are all laughing. And oh, it was God. only a few years ago <laughs> that we let Joey know. <laughs> He gave the news. Can we go to phase two? Can we cut this to go to phase two? Yeah. Or are we up? Uh, let's go to phase two. Now, Tommy, um, after after our BC and uh, after the uh, '72 silver medal Olympic team, you. Uh, Played for Detroit, of course. Uh, scored your first goal when Bobby O was on the ice. We already, <laughs> we already covered that. We'll cover that again since it's Bobby's birthday. And um, and then you played, uh, I don't know, five or six or seven years? I actually played four years. Four years um, in the AHL, IHL, and in Sweden. Correct. Am I correct? Yes. And uh, in the pros, in those three leagues, you averaged 1.01 point a game. So you averaged a point a game playing... Um, in your pro career. That's surprising. Okay, so just thought you'd like to know that. Um, and in, unless there's anything else you want to touch on, uh, no, yes? Well, I want to, you know, here we got the great Joe Burke here, who is a great interviewer. The adequate who, Joe Burke. Yeah, no, who is a, uh, what does Maloney call you? The archivist. The archivist. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like a, an evil TV <laughs> show. <Yeah. laughs> kind of creepy. But, you know, you came in the other night with Timmy and I, and uh, we're out on the ice with Tim, and, you know, could have been out on the ice with me as well. A great part. I was on the ice with you. Yeah, I know. I know. I was <laughs> in our camps, in our respective <laughs> well, camps. I was in your camp, kid. But, uh, I was nervous. I was more nervous than you were. Yeah. Uh, after I got out of hockey, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I called Mike Maloney, senior, who uh, is no longer with us, unfortunately, right. a great guy. A great guy. And a uh, hockey player at BC, and Mike's, young Mike's granddad was a great uh, athlete at BC. As well. Baloney, baseball player. Hall yeah. of Fame, two yeah. sports. Yeah. Uh, and Mike was a stockbroker at Kidder Peabody in Boston. Yep. And I said, Mike, what's a stockbroker? What um, am I going to do? Can I come in and have lunch with you? And Mike says, come on in. He greases the skids. I get hired. Um, I really enjoyed the investment business as a career, thanks to Mike Maloney Sr. Who's well, still in it. How many years still, later? I know. And now young Mike gets in the business with his dad over the years. And uh, last week I get a card, handwritten card. Very unusual these days. Everybody's oh, tweeting, I know, I know. emailing, uh, Facebooking, whatever. And he said, hey, just want to tell you congrats. And uh, that's a class act. Thank you, Mike, too. That's loyalty. Yeah. Loyalty over blood. Good stuff. That's my father. Loyalty <laughs> over blood. Um, all right. I'm going to end this by saying uh, not only is he one of the greatest players in BC hockey history, certainly I'm going to say the second best defenseman, but if they gave a trophy out for the best head of lettuce in BC <laughs> hockey history, it would be this cat. <laughs> all right. He's going to say I'm from Minnesota now, but that's a <laughs> salad. Florida. That is a salad, man. Look at that helmet, everybody. Just take a, get a gander at that helmet. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? What kind of shampoo do you use? <laughs> <laughs> Joey, I enjoy it, man. All right, kid. Well done. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right. Thomas Go Mellon. BC. Go Eagles. And they made it. Yeah. We'll see what happens this weekend. I know. Isn't that exciting? Oh my All right. God. Go Birds. Time.